you know it's time. IA Football is back, and we've got you covered with everything from the biggest hits to the biggest runs, from in game highlights to post game breakdown. We are here talking any and all high school football. From day one all the way to the dome, we've got you covered at IA Football. It is do or die time across the Iowa high school football scene as we approach Halloween. It's getting spooky uh, across the Iowa high school football slate. Small classes, playoffs are beginning. Big classes, final week of the regular season for some of these teams. It basically is the postseason uh, in 3A, 4A, and 5A, which is a ton of fun. This is the best time of the year, in my opinion. I love this time. Uh, joined by Nick Fox, as always, four more locks and dogs. Nick, say it every week. It's crazy, man, but it is already week nine. Yeah, I was just saying this is like our last regular season show. I mean, as, especially for the uh, the bigger classes, but uh, I'm excited. It was a big week for locks and dogs. <laughs> Not for me. Oh, how the mighty <laughs> fall. <laughs> So I'm excited for this week. It's comeback time. Yeah, it should be fun. And Nick, Nick's repping his Dodgers hat, making the World Series. Got to give props to him as a White Sox fan. It's something I can I can only dream of. So I'm hoping I'm in his spot one day. So he'll be uh he'll be hunkered in on Friday night covering games and helping and, and also watching his Dodgers play. So yeah. uh, I will be somewhere. I haven't decided where yet, but we'll figure that out. Um, few announcements before we get going. Um, this is not updated. I'm sorry. Uh, new rankings is not today. Today is locks and dogs. Uh, we got playoff predictions, though, coming your way today on Rockfin. Round of 32 predictions. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the games here, obviously, with locks and dogs. But our rankers uh, have typed up uh, explanations uh, for all of the 16 quarter or all of the 16 round of 32 games. I have all of my picks for each game on there. Dana Becker, who helps us out in writing articles. Uh, has all of his picks on there as well. So we're going to get you a ton of people's opinions on this Rockfin slate. Um, and that's set to go up this afternoon again for our premium uh, subscribers only. We've got a ton of Rockfin stuff coming out. Our next updated positional rankings, for those of you who have been waiting on that, that is coming next week. So that'll be updated before uh, pod play starts for all seven classes. So that is super exciting. Uh, should be a ton of fun. Uh, but yeah, that's what's uh, new on Rockfin. We'll have our usual stuff going up there as well. Appreciate everyone for being over there and supporting us on that. Uh, let's go through what last week looked like. And frankly, not good for me. One and six in the dogs. Nick made some headway, got back in the race. He's seven points behind me again. Seven point or one point for a lock, two points for a dog. Uh, we can only pick a team each once. But now with the postseason, Nick and I, we're doing double or nothing for the small classes, okay? So that's something to know. And we reset our teams. So we, you can, we can now pick a team uh, again. So it'll kind of reset. Can't pick a team twice in the postseason, obviously. But it did reset for the small classes uh, because Nick and I were kind of running out of teams. But now, uh, you know, it's getting tight. So uh, if you want to pers- participate at home, drop your picks. Maybe drop, or drop a dog that you think we missed that you can see upsetting. We went based off the IA football rankings, not by the – not by the playoff seeds for the small classes. So that should be noted as well. Uh, one final thing before we get going, our updated records for each class. This is on the dogs side of things. So as you can see, um, I'm pretty even across the board. Obviously, 4 I am 5 and 3. But Nick, really up and down. A man and A, 1 and 7 in each. But man, 2A, 6 and 2. So if Nick's, if Nick's picking you as a dog in 2A, I'd I'd feel pretty good. Nick Nick must know his two way ball. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's definitely what it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll see how it goes this week. I mean, playoffs, man. Anything can happen. Uh, high school football is crazy. So yeah, and I mean, if you're in the playoffs, obviously you, you're a good team, and and we're gonna see some matchups uh, uh, of teams that ha- aren't familiar with each other. Some teams that maybe were in a better district than we thought. Maybe teams are, were, you know, the district was a little easier. So it's really uh, comparing apples to apples, and and this one makes it fun. But before we get to the small classes. We got to start with the big ones. Uh, I'll start us off in class 5A, going with my lock in Dowling Catholic. I have not picked Dowling Catholic yet this year, I guess. Um, kind of shocking, but I, I got a good time to save him here. At Sioux City North, uh, final week, coming off a big win against Southeast Polk, uh, which Nick was there for. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm a fan of Dowling Catholic. I've gotten to see them once before, too, in their win over Centennial. Uh, Parker DePhillips has been solid. Joey Nahas has stepped in, too, when needed uh, and been tr- extremely efficient. Rashad Davis, though, uh, the guy you need to stop, 14 rushing touchdowns for him. Uh, I, I just like how this team plays. Uh, obviously, with Dowling Catholic, you, you know what you're going to get, and that's that's tough physical football, and, and they've brought that this year. So I'm going with Dowling Catholic uh, on the road, getting a win in Week 9. And my dog, I'm going with Prairie. I don't like going against Iowa City West, especially after uh, the win Iowa City West just had. So I want to make that very clear. I, I like Iowa City West a lot. But I think Prairie's a sneaky team and someone who's who's maybe – not getting a, a ton of love right now. Uh, and, and obviously, they just came off a one-point loss uh, against Bettendorf, who's number one in the RPI, number two in our poll. I know the Bettendorf people didn't like them being number two in our poll. Uh, but Prairie, it's a solid team. And I think this game against Iowa City West is going to be a ton of fun. Wyatt Eish has been extremely solid, 1,400 yards passing for him, 17 touchdowns. Uh, they got multiple threats uh, that have been catching the ball effectively. David Faison, 12 receiving touchdowns for him, 400 yards receiving uh, just about half of his or a third of his catches have been touchdowns this year, which is extremely impressive. So give me Prairie. I think this is going to be a little bit more high scoring just based on how these defenses play. Um, But I like Prairie. I like Iowa City West, but give me Prairie in, in, in a close one here. All right, my lock for 5A this week, I'm going with Iowa City Liberty Lightning. Uh, they're taking on Cedar Rapids Jefferson this week. And, you know, Liberty, they're known for their high-powered uh, big time numbers offense, and that's exactly what they've had. Uh, coming off a sixty-three to nine win against Waterloo West last week, um, I picked them as my dogs a couple weeks ago against Ankeny, and that worked out for me well. And so I'm gonna pick them right here for my lock. Uh, this is a great game for Liberty to go into. Um, you know, Cedar Rapids Jefferson is five and three, so this isn't a a cakewalk sort of a game for Liberty, but I think this is a great opportunity for them to play a competitive team that I think that they can beat uh, going into the playoffs to give them uh, that much more confidence um, as they head into these uh, winner go home games. <clears throat> My dog for this week, a uh, pretty big game coming up is Bettendorf and Iowa City High. So Bettendorf, you know, like you just mentioned, they're a, a potential number one team after this week in Class 5A. Um, they're coming off of a one-point victory over Prairie. Like you said, is a, a pretty close game um, against a sneaky Prairie team. Uh, and Iowa City High themselves coming off of a one-point heartbreaker against a really good Linmar team. Um, Bobby Bacon, a guy who we've talked about a lot, senior quarterback. He's got over 1,500 passing yards now and 14 passing touchdowns. Um, they have a freshman named Marshall Sheldon. He's got 56 and a half tackles with six tackles for loss, including two sacks for him. So a young guy making a difference there on the defensive side of the ball. The Little Hawks, I think they're a sneaky team. They put up a good fight against uh, Kennedy a couple weeks ago, who's a a solid team as well. Uh, Won that one in a one-point victory, but I think this is a game to watch. I think Bettendorf is a really solid team. Um, It'll be a tough game for the Little Hawks. And uh, definitely not going to be an easy game for either of these uh, either of these teams heading into the playoffs. So I like the Little Hawks. Give me the Little Hawks and my dog this week in 5A. Yeah, massive RPI implications uh, across all these games. We're going to get those matchups at 10 a.m. on uh, Saturday. I guess I didn't mention this either, guys, uh, as I go full screen here. Uh, Nick and I are going to be live on Friday night. I totally forgot to mention this in the, in the pre-show. I'm going to post this a few times throughout the week. Nick and I will be live on Friday night. Uh, I'm going to do a show Saturday after the pod's release, too. Uh, and if Nick joins wants to join me, he totally can. Um, but, yeah, we've got a show coming Friday night, a live show. Be sure to join us on YouTube. We're going to be breaking down RPI predictions and all that good stuff. Uh, so don't miss out on that. I'll be sure to get that posted multiple times. I forgot to put that in our pre-show. Uh, just talk about the RPI. got me thinking of that. Uh, but yeah, City High and Bettendorf, massive RPI implication, implications uh, there. Moving on to 4A, going with Winterset as my lock, a team that's that's not ranked, uh, but I like how Winterset plays. Uh, a lot of competitive losses in, in their in their losses they have had this year. DCG, Lewis Central, uh, Norwalk, all by one or two scores. They've got a nice win over Creston. Uh, and now they get Council Bluffs Jefferson, uh, expecting them to come out with a win here. Hunter Lyon at quarterback, really uh, uh, like him, 1,000 yards for him. Hank Wilmus, 1,000 yards rushing, 12 rushing touchdowns for him. 
Uh, the defense has been extremely solid as well. Jace Bellamy, uh, the junior, leading the way with 60 tackles. Uh, I'm a fan of Winterset. They're at 20 in the RPI. Uh, they need a win. They need some help ahead of them. Uh, but they just have to control what they can control in this final week, and everything else will fall into place. So they're looking to pick up a win at Council Bluff Jefferson and help try and get themselves into one of those final postseason slots. Nick and I both uh, uh, going with the same dog this week for Dodge at Spencer. I'll let him kind of talk on it too. Uh, I've, I went against the Dodgers a few weeks ago uh, with Lamar's pick, but I, I do like Fort Dodge uh, a lot. It's a team that can throw it. Uh, True McBride, the sophomore at quarterback, 1,200 passing yards, 17 passing touchdowns for him. Uh, I'll let Nick kind of carry on with his thoughts on Fort Dodge, uh, but I like Fort Dodge over Spencer uh, in the final week of uh, Class 4A. All right, my lock for 4A, I'm going with the Ballard Bombers. Uh, they go up against an equally rec- equally matched in record 4-4 four and four Boone. Um, you know, Ballard, they're 4-4. Four and four. This is one of those 4A teams that they've just kind of got uh, a really tough schedule, and 4A is a really competitive class this year across the board. Um, fresh off of a win against Des Moines North, but before that, uh, losses to North Polk and ADM. So I don't. I, I really like Ballard. I think they're a really good team. They have uh, a crazy defensive stat here for Jackson Waka, who I think we just made a post about him not too long ago. 100 total tackles on the year, 25 and a half tackles for loss, 13 and a half sacks, a fumble recovery, two interceptions. This guy does it all on the defensive side of the ball, um, and having a guy like that on defense is you know critical for these games and. You know, as they try and uh, secure their spot in the playoffs, uh, this will be a good game for them. Um, I think that they can uh, put up a good fight. I think they can beat Boone this week, so that's my lock. And like Cade said, my dog for this week, I got Ford Dodge. Going up against Spencer, um, not a whole lot to say. They have a really good one-two punch with True McBride at quarterback and Jamarius Green uh, at running back. He has 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns on the ground for himself. Um so I, I, yeah, I really like the Dodgers uh, going up against, uh, excuse me, up against the Tigers. Um, that'll be my dog for this week, and that's the end of four A. Let's move on to three A. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, rolling with Waller Catholic as my lock in Class Three A. Uh, really a cool story in Waller Catholic preseason unranked, and here they are undefeated, and they're not just undefeated; they have marquee wins over the likes of Western Dubuque, Independence, West Delaware. Uh, multiple ranked teams on their schedule, uh, and now they head to Makokata for their final regular season home game. Michael Borman, uh, the guy to know here, 700-plus rushing yards for him, nine rushing touchdowns. Not only that, but he leads the way in just basically everything defensively for them, six to seven and a half tackles, 15 and a half for loss. Uh, uh, this offense has been extremely effective running the football well. Uh, they, they can beat you with the, through the air, too, when they need to. Uh, but the defense, man, only allowing 20-plus points in one game this year, and that was at Assumption way back in Week 4. Uh, so they, haven't, they haven't allowed 20-plus points in, in the last month-plus, and they're going to look to continue that streak at Makokata, uh, riding with Waller Catholic and the Golden Eagles, one of the hottest teams in uh, the class overall. Uh, my dog, rolling with Atlantic here, and you want to talk about a team – fighting for their life, fighting for their playoff hopes. Atlantic currently sits at number 17 in the RPI. And if you know anything about the RPI, it is top 16 that make it. Atlantic buying for one of those wild card spots. They have a massive game at Nevada. Uh, they need an upset uh, against the Cubs in order to kind of raise their hopes and get in. Uh, and I'm going to roll with Atlantic here. This is one of the more pronounced rushing teams uh, in the class, averaging 7.7 yards per carry. Kind of a three-headed monster in Tyson O'Brien, Tyson O'Brien, Gavin McLaurin, and Ethan McNeil. This team wants to run the football. They can pass it when they need to with Tristan Hayes, but they, they want to keep it on the ground, and they've been effective uh, doing so. A couple sophomores leading the way in tackles with them and Jake Wallace and Carter Hadley. Uh, so Atlantic, I think Nevada is a tough task. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I, I like betting on teams that just absolutely need a win and with their backs against the wall, and this is – the playoffs don't start ne- next week for Atlantic. The playoffs start now for the Trojans. Uh, so I'm going to roll with them to, to kind of pull a big upset and try and take one of those final spots in the postseason. Yeah, my lock, I'm going with the same district there. I'm taking Harlan over Knoxville as my lock this week. Um, Harlan has been an interesting story this year. At the beginning of the season, I mean, they were ranked 
And then they kind of just kept losing and losing to these teams, maybe these games that they maybe shouldn't have lost. And they've gone on a winning streak three in a row, including the district leader, uh, Nevada, as well as a win against Atlantic last week. So they've looked a lot better, and it looks like they've um, probably gotten better as the season has gone on. I think this is a much different team than what we saw at the beginning of the year. Um, Gabe Arkfell, the guy who we've talked about before, he's come close on the 1,300-yard passing yard mark um, with 13 touchdowns through the air for him. So I like Harlan in this one. They're taking on Knoxville. Uh, Knoxville, they're 4-4 four and four on the year, fresh off a win against Perry. So I don't know, man. Cyclones, they might be a sneaky team if they can find their way into the playoffs in 3A. So give me Harlan to finish the regular season in a win. That point differential, too. We, we were looking at that before the show, yes. Nick. Harlan, Harlan needs to win, and they, they need to try and bump their point differential up uh, to try and catch Nevada in that in that tiebreaker spot. Uh, that's going to be really interesting. I do like that pick. Yeah, it's going to be. Sorry for cutting you off. No, it's okay. That district is going to be uh, all the way down to the wire between them, uh, Nevada, and Crescent. So it'll be interesting to keep up with that. My dog for this week, big game. We've got MOC Floyd Valley going up against Bishop Heelan. I'm taking the Dutchman in this one. Um, I think that this could be a closer game than some people might think. Bishop Heelan, you know, they haven't lost. They, they've they got a couple losses. Uh, the most recently, they lost to uh, Sergeant Bluff Luton last week, 42-23. to 23. Um, And... MOC Floyd Valley, they've got a, a similar loss there against Sergeant Bluff, Bluff Luton, and they also lost to Carroll. But Blake Albers, man, I think he was in the uh, the list for player of the year, IA football player of the year in 3A. Um, and he's been really, really solid, 1,600 passing yards, 17 touchdowns for him uh, at the quarterback position. So Dutchman, man, I think this could be a pretty close game. Um I think they could compete with a really good Bishop Heelan team here in the last week of the regular season. We got a lot of exciting games, and I think this will be one of them. Yeah, MOC at, at 12 in the RPI, and uh, they're not going to want to lose that game because that puts them I, – I I'm not good at predicting the RPI, but you just know with a loss you're probably going to drop a few right. spots, and you're going to drop really close to that number 16 line. And if there's some teams below you that win and you know have their opponent's opponent's record go up, whatever it may be, it's going to make things really uncomfortable for the Dutchman on Saturday morning. So get a win over Heelan, and I'm, I'm going to say oh, you're pretty yeah. safely in. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to want to do just that. That's what makes this fun in this final week. Uh, but we are going to head on over to Class 2A. Uh, and again, double points for the playoffs for Nick and I. Uh, so we're going to factor that in. Uh, and we did reset the team so we can now pick a team uh, that we did in the regular season. So that's why you're going to see us talking about some teams that we have this year. Rolling with West Lion as my lock. West Lion, one of my favorite teams in Class 2A uh, to follow. Uh, I got a chance to see them in person. Really fun to watch in person. Bryson Childress uh, leading the way under center. Only two interceptions, 12 passing touchdowns for him. Evan Hildring with 800-plus rushing yards. Uh, and the defense is what I really liked uh, watching uh, when, it came to, when it comes to West Lion football. Jackson Heiser leading the way in tackles. And Ridge Kramer, how about 9.5 sacks and 11.5 TFLs for the senior uh, out of West Lyon. I think this is one of the biggest threats. I think people are kind of, and rightfully so, thinking it's Spirit Lakes, uh, you know, class uh, as, as terms of a favor right now. But I think West Lyon is right up there, uh, number two in our pool. And, and yeah, I think West Lyon and, and Spirit Lake are our one two monster in, in class 2A right now. It's going to be a ton of fun to follow those two uh, advancing along in the postseason. Uh, and my dog going with Hudson. To knock off Manson Northwest Webster. Now I got to give Nick some props here. Nick, going with Manson Northwest Webster last week to knock off an undefeated top five yeah. team, and the Cougars did it. Uh, Manson Northwest Webster is legit. I guess Nick knew that the whole way. Uh, Absolutely, <laughs> I've always had faith in that team. <laughs> but I am going to go with Hudson here, and I do like Hudson. Couple tough losses down the stretch to Grundy Center and South Harden, who I think are really good. Uh, and I just I like what the Pirates bring. Key and Creel, I did see on social media first Hudson quarterback to throw for a thousand yards since like 2018 or something. So congrats to him. He's leading the way passing and rushing. He's kind of a do it all guy on offense. He's got a Anderson Yoder to throw to uh, and Drew Sundine. Um, but yeah, I, I like Hudson. Kind of just a hunch pick here. 
Uh, going with the Pirates to knock off Manson, who I believe is right at number 16 or number 15 in our IF football poll. So that's what I'm going off of. Again, these are going off the IF football post polls. So I'm going with Hudson. All right, my lock for this week, I'm going with Camper Catholic Knights. Uh, this is a team that I got to watch a couple weeks ago against Des Moines Christian. This is a team who lost week one against Bishop Heelan, and they have not looked back. 7-0 and since that game, their most recent game, they beat Southeast Valley 34-12. to Brock Bading, one of the best quarterbacks in the class, one of the best quarterbacks in the state. He's got over 1,500 passing yards, 16 touchdowns through the air, and four on the ground. And I want to talk about uh, Jaron Hoffman here, a sophomore running back who just broke 1,000 yards rushing for himself and 10 touchdowns on the ground for him. Uh, Kemper Catholic, they've been one of the best teams in the class, uh, 2A. You know, they've also been a very, very competitive class this year. And Kemper Catholic has been up there with one of the best. So I've got him winning this week in the first round against Sheraton. And my dog this week, Oka Boji, playing up against Western Christian. Um, this is kind of a, a weird one here. Oka Boji hosting Western Christian here. And uh, they're ranked a little bit lower in our rankings. So I'm taking Oka Boji. I'm taking the Pioneers. Landon Duvall. The name to know, he's got over 1,500 passing yards, 17 through the air, as well as 12 touchdowns uh, on the ground. Uh, I really like Okaboji. This is a team I don't think that I've talked about this year. Um, looks like one of their losses against Spirit Lake, who, like you just mentioned, seems to be one of the best in the class, if not the best. So I think this will be a good game for the Pioneers. Good first-round team against Western Christian. They are a really good team, um, but I've got Okaboji to pull off an upset. I did just realize I had a brain fart. I talked about um, Hudson, who's my 1A dog. I got them I got them flipped uh, around. So West nice. Liberty, uh, I'm sorry, uh, everybody. West Liberty, my 2A dog. Uh, I'll talk about them quickly before I move on. Uh, West Liberty uh, hosting or, or going on the road. Uh, to West Marshall, it looks like. Uh, and I like the Comets. Four losses on the year, but that comes to – or five losses in the year, sorry. But those come to the likes of really good teams in, in Northeast, Wilton, Regina, West Burlington, uh, a lot of good teams there. Uh, and I like what West Liberty brings. Uh, West Marshall obviously ranked in our pool, uh, but I'm going with the Comets here. Riker Dengler uh, has been solid, 1,200-plus passing yards for him. They, they've got two backs with 300-plus yards. Uh, Riker leads the way in rushing touchdowns as well. Uh, defense has been solid. Cameron Isk, uh, Iski, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, leading the way on tackles. A bunch of seniors uh, leading this way, leading the way on defense. Um, love senior-led teams at, at this time of the year. Uh, so I'm going with West Liberty as a little upset over West Marshall. I do apologize. That is my uh, 2A um, dog right there. But we'll move on uh, to Class 1A. Uh, Wilton is my lock for this week. Uh, this is a team. Coming off a loss against Regina, uh, that kind of stings. Uh, you know it stings, but they still get a home game. They get Applington's, Applington Parkersburg coming to their place. Uh, I like Wilton in this one. Uh, I've talked about Drew Keith recently. 1,400-plus uh, passing yards for him, 17 touchdowns, only four picks, and they got a running back in Owen Hassel uh, who is kind of approaching that 1,000-yard mark and 14 rushing touchdowns. I like Wilton a lot. I don't just like them in this game. I like them to make a run in, in the postseason and in the pod. Uh, whatever pod they get thrown in, uh, but yeah, I like Wilton. And then Hudson, obviously, uh, if you fast forward to the Class 1A scene, I accidentally talked about Hudson for my Class 2A dog, so you'll have to go back uh, and listen to me talk about Hudson, but I did do that there. So uh, that's my 1A picks. All right, my 1A picks for this week, my lock, I'm going with MFL Marmack, heading up against the Albernet Pirates. Um, MFL Marmack, a team that I've uh, talked about before. They were a dome team last year. And it looks like they could possibly get there again this year. Um, their one loss in recent history is to Dyke New Hartford. Lost in a 34-0 to uh, a loss against Dyke New Hartford, who we know has uh, extremely elite defense. But they're going up against Albernet, a team that I think that they can beat. Um, Quinn McGo, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. He's got 1,000 yards of rushing for himself and 12 touchdowns on the ground for him. Um, MFL Marmac, a really well-balanced team, um, a team that definitely uh, rushes the ball more than passes, only 450 passing yards on the season for them, 
but well over 2,000 rushing yards with 7.4 yards per carry. So watch out for MFL Marmax ground game against MFL, or excuse me, against Albernet. Um, so I'm taking the Bulldogs as my lock. <clears throat> my dog for this week, this is a sneaky game. This might be one of the best first round games in 1A. AHSTW going up against Hinton, and I'm taking the Vikings to win this one. Uh, I picked Hinton as my dog a couple weeks ago against OABCIG, and that one hit. And I'm hoping that this one hits as well. Luke Sternberg, uh, definitely a guy you want to talk about, definitely a guy you want to watch if you're going to this game. He's got over 13, or right on the dot, excuse me, right on the dot, 1,300 yards rushing and 14 touchdowns on the ground for him. Um, I think this is going to be a really competitive game. Uh, Hinton 7-1, and one, their one loss came to Ridgeview in a really close 15-0 uh, battle um, five weeks ago. So watch out for the Vikings, man. This is going to be a huge game, a uh, big-time upset watch for Hinton, and I like AHSTW's odds in this one. Yeah, no doubt. A lot of fun ones across, across Class 1A. As we move to Class A, uh, rolling with a West Hancock as my lock right away. Uh, this is a team that has not allowed uh, double digits defensively in a game in the last five weeks. Uh, yeah, five straight games not allowing double digits. Three of those have been shutouts, too. Uh, so this defense is rolling. They get Hartley Melvin Sanborn coming to town. Uh, but I like West Hancock a lot. Uh, only thrown for 246 yards in the entire season, but you can do that when you average eight and a half yards per carry as a team. 2,600 rushing yards. Uh, collectively, Brady Bixel leading the way with a thousand of them himself. Like I said, the defense has just been phenomenal. Uh, they've gotten they've gotten the ability to gotten a lot of guys in the game because of how they've been winning. Uh, so that their their guys are well rested, uh, starters are ready to go, uh, and I bet West Hancock uh, is is you know ready to roll on another postseason run. My dog this week though, going with Logan Magnolia, uh, going to MMCRU, MMCRU, a newly ranked team across their class 1A scene as of a few weeks ago. Uh, but I like Logan Magnolia and how they've been playing as of late. Uh, a team in the past who's been a predominantly run-heavy team, but now they got a quarterback, an Ashton Pezulik, uh, sophomore, 1,400 passing yards, 18 passing touchdowns, only six interceptions. Uh, they got a very balanced backfield, uh, five guys with over 130 rushing yards. They use a lot of different guys rushing the football. Uh, and they're going to need to be – balance in this game uh, against a really good MMCRU offense and a really good MMCRU program in general. West Vanna, though, uh, 31 catches for 600-plus yards and eight receiving touchdowns. He's been a handful to stop uh, for defenses. Uh, so give me Loma and, and a little bit of an upset here in the opening round for Class A. All right, my lock for this week, I'm going with Woodbury Central in the first round. Um, interesting story here for Woodbury Central, a sophomore Jackson Vershoor. We've, we've done this. We have? Yep, Verscore. Verscore, dang yeah. it. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Jackson. <laughs> I hope you accept my apology. 1,200 yards. He is a stud uh, through the air. 15 touchdowns through the air. Uh, in addition to that, 336 uh, rushing yards and three touchdowns on the ground for him. Zach Butler is the guy in the backfield with Jackson. Uh, he has got over 1,000 yards rushing, 19 rushing touchdowns for him. Woodbury Central, uh, they lost to Tri-Center a couple weeks ago. That was another uh, uh, dog pick that I had a couple weeks ago. But other than that, they have been doing well. They've been winning games. Um, they've made themselves one of the best teams in the class, uh, an elite team and one that will be – uh, sneaky good and tough to beat in the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, I like Woodbury Central. I like the Wildcats. Um, I think that they're a really well-rounded team, and I think they can get the win this week. And moving on to my dog, I'm going with Mount Ayer. Is that how you say it? Mount Ayer. Ma yeah. Mount Ayer, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's throwing me off there. Mount Ayer, and they're playing Earlham this week, and – this is another one of those teams that they, they get a lot of reps to a lot of different guys. Um, they've got four guys that are over 200 yards, over 250 yards rushing, um, including Dyson Thompson, a sophomore, who's got 783 rushing yards, and Jackson Ruggles, a junior, who's got 462 rushing yards. So this is not 
a one-man show over here with the Raiders. They definitely spread the love around. Uh, they're getting the ball to a lot of different guys, and this is a pretty young team too. Quarterback is a junior. Their top rushing running back, Dyson Thompson, the sophomore. Their top receiver, a junior. So this is a team that we could maybe see uh, you know, if things don't quite work out for them in this playoff this year, we could see them again next year. But I got them winning the first round against Earlham, and those are my picks for Class A. Dig it. Dig it. Mm-hmm. Eight man, here we go. Woodbine rolling with the Tigers. Uh, going against Collins Maxwell is a little little tricky. That's a really good team uh, in Collins Maxwell, but I like Woodbine a lot. Uh, under uh, one blemish on the record this year, and that was to uh, number one Rims of St. Mary's. Brody Pryor, the junior, 1,100-plus passing yards for him, 24 touchdowns to only four interceptions. They got three guys with 400-plus rushing yards uh, as well. All of them have seven or more rushing touchdowns, so very balanced in the backfield. Uh, And then Landon Bloom, uh, 500-plus receiving yards, 16 receiving touchdowns on 27 catches is pretty nuts. He's a guy, uh, a handful to stop. Um, for defenses, the sophomore out of Woodbine. Uh, the defense, um, in terms of uh, eight-man defenses, is pretty solid. Only allowed 20-plus points uh, in two of their games all year. They've got multiple shutouts to their name, multiple six-point uh, defensive uh, showings. Uh, so Woodbine, like him against Collins Maxwell, uh, I think this team is going to go on a run here in the postseason. going to be interesting to see. Uh, the pods for eight man once they come out uh, and my dog uh, this is actually the one lock that I, I have missed all year uh, was cam so I'm going to give him a shot to redeem me against GTRA I like GTRA a lot don't get me wrong uh, that, that's a really good team and a really competitive team but I think I think uh, McCade Paulson and cam uh, is a little slept on here McCade uh, the senior quarterback 1700 plus total purpose yards 34 all-purpose touchdowns for him uh, he's been a dude uh, leads the way in tackles for them as well, as well as Colin Bauer, who's got 21 TFLs for this team. Uh, they've got three guys with 10-plus TFLs on cam. Uh, so they get, they get in the backfield. They cause some trouble. I think this is one of the better opening round games in Class 8, man. Cam and GTRA should be a ton of fun. Give me the Cougars and a little bit of an upset here. All right, my lock for 8, man. I am going with Audubon. They're going up against East Mills. Um, Audubon, they've been undefeated, perfect so far, 8-0. and um, A guy I want to talk about from the Wheelers is Aaron Olsen, a senior who has been the leading the way on rushing and receiving for this team. Uh, he broke through 1,000 yards rushing, 18 touchdowns on the ground, and he's also got uh, just short of 200 receiving yards and three touchdowns for himself. Audubon, they've been one of the elite teams in eight-man. Um, I think they'll continue to have success here in the postseason as one of the better teams. Um, I really like this Wheelers team, and I like them to win this week as well. My dog for this week, again, this could be argued as one of the biggest playoff games in the class. We have Bell Plain and Bedford, and I'm taking the Plainsmen here. Bell Plain, they are a sneaky team, 7-1. and one. Um they are fresh off of an upset against Iowa Valley last week, uh, and that was a big game for them. Uh, Ty Alcott, their quarterback, who is a, a more of a, a scramble quarterback, he has 293 passing yards, but he has over 1,100 rushing yards and 20 touchdowns on the ground for him. Bedford's a really, really good team. Um, Dome team last year, they've got proven success. And I don't know, man, Bell Plain, they've looked really good. They're coming off of that red hot uh, win over o- Iowa Valley. So give me Bell Plain for a big upset against the Bulldogs. Yeah, two IA football ranked teams clashing in the round of 32. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's frankly a, a tough draw for both those teams there as I pull up. is it Are they two top 10 teams? Bell Plain at number nine, Bedford at number five. The so top ten matchup. That's in the just open, a, in the that's opening a rough round. draw, man. Hey, that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank everybody for joining in. Uh, again, Nick and I will be live Friday night after I get back from whatever game I'm at. We're gonna be going class by class, trying to give you guys an idea of what we think the pods could look like. But then again, you've seen Nick and I's picks this year, and maybe we don't know as much as we think. <laughs> so no, I'm kidding. This should be a ton of fun. Pods drop Saturday morning, 10 a.m. We're gonna have content coming your way after that too. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.